Welcome to the community of the Ascension, Church of the Ascension. We're delighted to be worshiping together. We are a community that follows Christ through our learning and our service to God and each other. At the bottom of your screen on the right side, you'll see a button that says chat. Please uh, push that button to introduce yourself. And especially during the prayers, you can type in your prayers to interact so that we can also be praying your prayers alongside you. Engage in the peace. Um, another function that's helpful is a button called notes. If you push that, the bulletin will come right up so you can follow along. Again, we're delighted to worship on this Sunday morning as a community. So let us begin. Blessed be God, the one holy and undivided Trinity. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. with you and, and also, also with, with you. you let us pray grant O merciful God that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea, back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the beginning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians 
upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will read together responsively Psalm 114. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled, Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains, that you skipped like rams, you little hills, like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water, and flintstone into a flowing spring. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, If any uh, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you seventy seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave his debt. But that same slave as he went out came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. And his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. When his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave, as I have mercy on you? 
And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I met with a couple new to this parish this week, and I shared a secret with them. I was relating to a concern they had, and my secret that I shared was, I don't always like church. (laughs) And if further truth is to be told, I dislike a lot of church leaders especially the ones that use that three-letter word, sin. It makes me feel uneasy, and I think it's completely disrespectful of the Jesus message of forgiveness, the forgiveness that we have received. And over the years of working for churches in the Pacific Northwest and the East Coast, I've noticed that I'm not really alone in my secret. Church, Mentioning that word makes a lot of us uneasy, uncomfortable. It's almost like the word church creates a climate that comes in and kind of closes the conversation. Or a fog rolls in, like over San Francisco, or a haze comes in, like it has been here in Seattle. I wonder what your experience is when you talk about church. Gandhi once said, after reading Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, I could be a Christian if it weren't for all those churchy people. (laughs) So I find it fascinating. The word church, it seems to be that there are two definitions that we think of. First, the word church We associate it with the institution, church building, the church hierarchy with a lot of white men wearing funny hats, and church politics. And then there's a second, more literal, original meaning, community. The second meaning, the original meaning, church, is what I think Jesus has in mind in the gospel that we heard last Sunday and this morning. Jesus speaks about community, about people. If they are to be church, they're learning to become a beloved community, an organically diverse group of people who choose to act with forgiveness, compassion, prayer. Bishop Curry describes church as the radical Jesus community. And I wonder how we, this very community, Church of the Ascension, who is gathered now today in our living rooms, worshiping online from different states, I wonder how we are becoming this Jesus community. Interestingly, the Old Testament reading from Exodus has particular insights about how to become a Jesus community, the church that Jesus was envisioning. So looking at Exodus, context always matters. So let us recall in Exodus, the people of Egypt were enslaved for over 400 years. They are stuck physically, emotionally, abused, disconnected, unable to worship God as they want, unable to be together. 
Save us, O Lord. They prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. And in Exodus, the writers of Exodus tell us that God heard these prayers and responded by providing very unlikely leaders and natural disasters, plagues, and two million people fled Egypt under a cover of a cloud. A cloud led the community out of bondage, it says. Even as a little girl, I've always wondered what that cloud looked like. You know, was it those like puffy cotton ball like uh, cotton balls against the blue sky? Was it rather that pink and gray kind of haze that we're seeing over a lot of our states that are undergoing forest fires? I don't know what it looked like. But maybe I have an inkling of what it felt like after six months of being in a pandemic, the feeling of uncertainty and living in a cloud. The cloud led the people out of bondage. And after the cloud led them out of bondage, it didn't get much better. After departing Egypt, the people faced new problems, a scorching desert. They had a long way to distance to go before the promised land, and the Egyptian army was literally chasing them down, threatening them. Today we read the heavy, thick cloud led the people, the church, out of bondage and became so thick that the people couldn't see. It went before them. It was behind them. So in other words, without being able to see, really all the people could do was put one foot in front of the other, day and night. All they could do was keep on walking. And we are told in the book of Exodus, that as they walked, they began praying. They began letting go. They began forgiving and healing. And eventually, these very people became a community who trusted that God was leading them to the promised land. And they still do. And once elders put this explanation of how God acts in our lives in times of uncertainty, in times of unknowing, in the cloud, to paper, clouds have really always then been the symbol of God's presence for centuries. So much so that in the 14th century, mystics started writing volumes of literature titled A Cloud of Unknowing. I'm taking the title from this very text this morning. The books of the cloud of unknowing are really are in the form of a letter counseling a leader of a church how in clouded times we are invited to pray. We are invited to put one step in front of the next. We are invited to trust God to be mysteriously leading us, you and me, to a promised future. And when the Egyptian army was about to trample the Israelites over, the cloud moved behind the people, having their back, protecting them. And then they waited in darkness, in silence. Exodus describes a community, people of God, waiting, and eventually learning to pray and letting go and reconciling their past. There are ways that our time is very similar to those scary, uncertain times of the Egyptians chasing the Israelites 
out of bondage. And we may be tempted to go back, to go back to Egypt, to go back to bondage, to go back to old ways, to old ideals. We may be tempted to simply fret over the mistakes we have made, reopening old wounds. And I don't know what your wounds are from the past, but I guess that some of you, like me and these newcomers, some of those scars come from the institutional church. The instructions of how to become a community of faith, a church, in Exodus are when the people were uncertain in the cloud, when they saw the opportunity to let go and to spend their time praying and forgiving and holding compassion for one another and seeing that God's unfailing guidance was with them, they eventually formed a religious community. So I may be very impatient to reach the end of this pandemic. I'm impatient to get through November. I want to skip through the stages. I want to be on my way to something new. And yet the slow work of God is always the law of progress. Progress is made through passing through the stages of instability. And it takes time for a new spirit to gradually form in me in you, and in us. So may we accept the anxiety of feeling ourselves in suspense and respond in the night and in the day with steps of prayer, compassion, forgiveness, giving God the benefit that God is teaching us how to become a Jesus community. So let's put this into action. This week, I ask you to choose a word that best describes church. What is that word for you? Maybe it's community, love, respect. Choose a word. And then repeat that word through today. Repeat that word through tomorrow and every day until next Sunday. Say love, respect. This is your willingness to consent to the presence of God. As your mind does get clouded, and we do get distracted, and we get uncertain and unsure, return to that word. Repeat it. Wait. Each day. And sometimes even negative emotions will arise and feelings of the past and fear, and it's okay. Return to the sacred word, love, forgiveness, respect. Amen. Please join me in saying the Nicene Creed, found in the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from the light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, 
in, in accordance with the scriptures. scriptures. He, he is ascended, ascended into, into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will, will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, his kingdom will have no end. We believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, life who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Come now and let us pray together, says the Lord. Therefore, in unity, fellowship, and harmony, let us do Christ's will and share our prayers, saying, Lord, please hear us. Let us come together in support and blessing for our church and communion in the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, Heather, our priest, for ministers and ministries both global and personal, we pray. Lord, please hear us. Let us join together as one people and one planet without petty quarrels and divisions as we are all truly in and of God's creation. We respect and care for others, we pray. Lord, hear us. Let us consider those among us who are selected to lead. Grant them the wisdom to remember that leadership is first and foremost service, and the moral strength to bear this responsibility. We pray. Lord, Lord please, please hear us. Let us remember our fellow humans who have chosen other paths, Jews, Muslims and Christians, we all worship the same God, and we should serve together in unity and mutual respect and love. We pray. Lord, please hear us. Let us come together as one united humanity and put a final end to racism, violence, and oppression. Let us house the homeless, clothe the naked, and feed the hungry. We have the vast resources of God's earth and our intelligence. We can ease so much suffering. Release us from our greed, we pray. Lord, Lord please, please hear us. us. Let us focus our thoughts on those among us who are ill or in pain. Today we are praying for Carol Jean's sister Linda and her continuing struggle for her health. We're asking for healing prayers for Sandra Harris, who's undergoing radiation. Also praying for her mom, Arta Lee, as she cares for her daughter. Nan, who's recovering from surgery. Keelan, we're praying for his positivity and joy. Amy is praying for her nephew, Charlie, and his mother, Tracy. They feel God's presence. Carol Horton is praying for her granddaughter, Callie, who's undergoing treatment for a tumor. Sean prays for Spencer, who's recovering from heart surgery. We have a prayer for the end of forest fires. We pray for the health of our forests and protection for all of us from the smoke. What else do you pray for? May we come to their aid as they would come to ours, we pray. Lord, Lord please hear us. Let us count our uncountable blessings and pray for those with birthdays. We include other thanksgivings, naming them silently or aloud. 
at the beginning of the school year, we ask God's blessing on our computer devices. Typically, we would ask all students and teachers to come forward with their backpacks at the beginning of the school year. This year is incredibly different as we are um, doing school remotely. So um, if you want to grab your device, I would love to bless it um, as it will be a key tool for all of us in our learning. So I grabbed mine and let's do a blessing. Let's hold up your devices your iPads, your laptops, whatever you're using for school. God, there is so much to learn. We pray that we will be ready and that we will give our best with this device. Bless it. Guide us to be good stewards of our device. Help us to be patient with it when passwords and logins don't work when blips and unknowns occur. Give us grace, patience, and cheerfulness throughout the day so that together the teachers, students, parents, neighbors, the church can become the best school year that it can be. And the blessing of God Almighty, the one holy and undivided Trinity, be with us and our things now and for always. Let us carry a light in our hearts for the dead who have passed on, but who yet live in our thoughts and prayers. We especially remember Kay Walker and those I now ask you to name silently or aloud. In the hope of a heavenly reunion someday, we pray. Lord, Lord please hear us. Bind us together in unity, faithful community, and harmony as we go forth in the world to do your work. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with, with, you. with you. Peace. Please share peace with those peace. around you. Peace. 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 Some announcements in the life of this church are, um, we are halfway through our brick campaign. So far, our goal is to um, have 55 bricks that are engraved with um, special things that have happened in the life of this church. Baptisms, confirmations, weddings, your favorite Bible verse. Um, and we are creating a path right by our front sanctuary doors with your names and your celebrations to um, create memories here at Ascension. Our goal is 55 bricks, and right now we have sold 32 bricks. So it's not too late to submit your form um, for a brick so that we can lay those bricks and bless that path uh, in later September. Also invite you into learning. Uh, this week we had our class one of Sacred Ground series. It's a dialogue series about race, racism, and how it interacts with our own personal histories and identities. Um, we, it's a year-long class, and we, we, it's a commitment um, through June. But it's not too late for you to join in if you kind of join in now toward the beginning. We had over 32 also uh, um, people participate and we're delighted and we welcome you into this grand pertinent conversation. Also for learning is we invite all of our children and adolescents um, young of heart to help us illustrate Psalm 104. So Next Sunday, the 20th, September 20th, after the service, we are setting up tables outside and inside, and we will direct one household unit at a time to be at a separate table. 
and you will, will give you the verse of Psalm 104. There are 34 verses. We will give you a verse, and they all celebrate the wonders of God being here in this place, this planet with us. And then we'll stitch those all together, and we will create a creation mural. So your, the email this week will explain everything you need to know about the creation mural, but that's next Sunday. And my last announcement is service. Next Sunday also, right after um, the service at 1130, we'll, we will have another curbside donation to support Ballard Food Bank. So you can donate cans of food. They're open to um, your, your different items. I asked what they need and they said all things. So, Come at 11.30 until 12.30, stop by. We'll have two people who will take whatever you put on the curb, load it into their car, and donate it to the Ballard Food Bank. We're delighted that you're walking with us and journeying to, with us to become this Jesus community. So we're going to turn our attention to the Holy Eucharist. We're going to give our, our gifts, um, our financial gifts, and our gifts, our spiritual gifts to God. So if you have um, something to bring to your home altar, a cracker, a piece of bread, um, we will go over salvation history and we will bless it and we will partake in communion together. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God. Mm. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to, to you, you forever, forever and ever. ever. At your command, <laughs> all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have, and have their, their being. being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us takers, partakers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have, have mercy, mercy, Lord. Lord. For, for we, we are, are sinners, sinners in, in your sight. sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By, By his blood, he reconciled us. us. By, By his wounds, we are healed. healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you with hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God power, power and might, heaven and, and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you.
Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Jacob, Rebecca and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us and deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, be known, be known to, to us, us in, the in the breaking, breaking of, of the bread. bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us, us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and, and the, the glory, glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy, Happy are those who are called to the supper of the land. The body of Christ and the bread of heaven. the body of Christ, and the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And in these uncertain times and these, this cloud of unknowing, may you find the mysterious Christ guiding you into the promise of your future, the promise of becoming the beloved community, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.